Good morning. Welcome to worship at King of Glory Lutheran Church in Boise, Idaho. We're glad to have you with us this morning as we worship online together. We begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In Christ, we have been set free from our sins so that we might live for righteousness. Almighty God, guard and lead you that you may have life and have it abundantly. My shepherd, you supply my need. Most holy is your name. In pastures fresh, you make me feed beside the living stream. You bring my wandering spirit back when I forsake your ways and lead me for your mercy's sake in paths of truth and grace. When I walk through the shades of death, your presence is my stay. One word of your supporting breath drives all my fears away. Your hand inside of all my foes does still my table spread. My cup with blessings overflows. Your oil anoints my head. The sure provisions of my God attend me all my days. Oh, may your house be my abode and all my work be praise. Here would I find a settled rest while others go and come. No more a stranger or a guest, but like a child at home. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Also with you. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Those who welcomed the message were baptized and devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. 
I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into Righteousness and truth, my spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowding me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death reading from 1st Peter. For it is a credit to you if, by being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing, doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure where you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The gospel for this fourth Sunday of Easter, often fondly referred to as Good Shepherd Sunday, is from John, the 10th chapter. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, 
Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Jamie Wireman was only 18 years old and unmarried when she gave birth to her first child, a baby girl. And fortunately, fortunately, little Whitney Elaine Johnson, that's what she named her, Whitney Elaine Johnson, was born without a completely formed skull, and she died 19 hours later. Jamie was poor, and she couldn't afford a proper burial for her child. But she'd visited Barnett's Creek Church in her hometown of Thomasville, Georgia. She'd been there a few times and she knew they had a church cemetery. And the church graciously consented to the burial. A few days later, however, the elders of Barnett's Creek Church had changed their minds and they decided to have the body of the baby girl exhumed from the church cemetery. They had discovered that little Whitney Elaine was biracial. Her mother, Jamie, was white. Her father, Jeffrey Johnson, was black. Barnett's Creek Church is all white, always has been. And as Deacon Logan Lewis told Jamie's mother, that's a 100% white cemetery. See, the church had a policy that's over 100 years old stating that minorities are to be barred from the cemetery. But then the news media got a hold of the story and the members of Barnett's Creek Church found out what their elders were up to and the church decided not to exhume the baby's body. Now you'd think after all that, Jamie and Jeffrey would have had enough of Barnett's Creek Church. But somebody there must have shown them some compassion because Jamie and Jeffrey decided they wanted to join the church, that it was time to get married and straighten out their lives. And you'd think that after that, Barnett's Creek Church might have learned a lesson. But no, the church refused to allow Jamie and Jeffrey to be married in the church or to join the congregation. Deacon Lewis told Jamie's grandmother, Mrs. Wireman, I don't think it's the appropriate time for this because I don't think there's any repentance in their heart. It took the death of their daughter to bring Jamie and Jeffrey back to church. But thieves and bandits robbed them of the chance. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus said to them, I am the gate for the sheep. All who, listened be- all who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. One evening years ago in another church where I was the pastor, Andrea walked into the church half hour early for choir rehearsal, crying and sobbing. 
I was afraid something terrible had happened. And I said, Andrea, what's wrong? What happened? I just saw a roadkill, she said. Well, you know, I've seen a lot of squirrels who've met an, met an untimely end on the road, and it's gruesome and it's sad, but people seldom pull over to the side of the road to have a good cry over it. You've seen them too. Andrea had seen them. So it might seem just a little silly to be so upset about such a commonplace occurrence. But I knew Andrea was a single mother. She was struggling to pull her life together after an abusive, abusive relationship, trying to hold on to care for her daughters, hold down a lousy job, go to college so she could get a job that would support her family. So we talked not about squirrels, but about the other commonplace sorrows in life. You know, you've had them too. We talked about life and everything else that had occurred that day we talked about being at your wit's end and feeling alone against the world. We talked about prayers of the heart and how sometimes they seem to evaporate in, your, in the air over your head before they ever reach heaven. We talked about loneliness. We talked about fears, about being in the dark, about lost hopes and what it takes to build new ones, about the promises we heard as children that didn't quite hold up. And how sometimes after a particularly hard day, when the light at the end of the tunnel escapes you and you can feel so low, so low, that you could even identify with one unlucky small creature. Andrea is your neighbor. Jamie and Jeffrey are your neighbors. They live with you. They are sheep of the same fold. Amor, they are us. Because some days, sometimes, some particularly hard day, or maybe some all too ordinary day, sooner or later, we are the ones outside the fold. Black sheep, beset by thieves and bandits, abandoned by the simple promises of childhood, thrust out of the gate into a world of everyday occurrences and commonplace sorrows, where prayers seem to evaporate into thin air, where the light at the end of the tunnel escapes you, in the dark, at your wit's end, alone against the world, searching for new faith, new hope, some new promise. Thrust out the gate where we must grow up into a more mature adult relationship with our God. Andrea, Jamie, Jeffrey, black, white, Hispanic, straight, gay, lesbian, they're all our brothers and sisters in Christ, our blood in Christ, sheep of the same shepherd. And they come to us to be with us, to search with us for good pasture, because they've heard that the shepherd of the sheep sometimes frequents our gatherings, feeds us in bread and wine, in word of God and gospel truth, in the spirit of prayer and of worship, in peace shared, and in our compassion and service. We all come together as church, even as church online, in hopes of hearing our names called out loud, called by the shepherd himself, called to faith, to hope, to green pasture, abundant life. Do you know, they say the Palestinian shepherds in Jesus' day actually used to make up names for their favorite sheep, like shaggy or long ears or white nose. The sheep hear the shepherd's voice, Jesus says. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out calls us each by name, like Shaggy or Long Ears or White Nose, Andrea, Jamie, Jeffrey, Winfrey, Whitney. Good and bad, saint and sinner alike, on your good days and on your bad, whoever you are, 
Be you dopey, grumpy, sleepy, happy, bashful, dark, or sleepy, or even Deacon Logan Lewis. Come here, Christ says. Come and find green pasture next to Jamie and Jeffrey and all the rest of us wayward sheep. In my hometown on the plains of eastern Colorado, there is another church cemetery. It's on the grounds of Ebenezer Lutheran Care Center. Ebenezer is a care center for the elderly these days, but around the turn of the century, it started out as a tuberculosis sanatorium. It was started by a man who had himself received treatment in England, where Lutheran deaconesses had nursed him back to hell. So he started Ebenezer as a place where the poor, those who couldn't afford treatment in usual sanatoriums, could be cared for by Lutheran deaconesses. And for years, deacons and deaconesses, men and mostly women, gave their lives to care for these residents, earning little more than their own room and board. They nursed many back to health, but not all. So the cemetery was set up as a sort of pauper's field where those residents who died without money or family to come and get them could find a final resting place. When I was a child, we would occasionally stop our play to wander under the cool shade of the big trees in that cemetery. And I read all the names on all the tombstones over and over. They're just simple graves, but each one was buried with dignity and prayer and with their own stone engraved over their own name. Many of the deacons and deaconesses grew old and died there too, and they were buried alongside the poor in that little church cemetery, saints and paupers side by side. Over the years, there have been only two ways that you could get into that cemetery. You had either to show boundless compassion or be desperate for it. And that is what the church of Jesus Christ is like. This is God's house. This is God's people, God's flock. You must be desperate to get into it. And once in, you must join the shepherd in showing boundless compassion to thieves and bandits, to outcasts and strangers, to saints and sinners, paupers and every small creature, and welcome all the sheep to the good shepherd. Amen. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures feed us. For our use your fold prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. We are yours in love, befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep your flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Hear us, children, when we pray. You have promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. You have mercy 
to receive us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Early let us seek your favor, early let us do your will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. I invite you now to join with me as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for those who speak the message of your welcoming love. Teach us to trust in you. Call us together in the breaking of the bread and prayer. Enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and within our own congregation, that our confidence in you may grow and mature. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Guide the leaders of our nation, our state, and leaders throughout the world to work together in this pandemic and to ensure that the poor, those without resources, and the most vulnerable among us are safe and cared for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. Bring wholeness to those who long for healing and peace to those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work, the Meridian and Idaho food pantries, and the feeding ministries in every community. Open our hearts that we may open our tables and let none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. As we turn now to a time of thanks uh, for all that we have seen and heard, ways in which you can respond to the support of this congregation's ministries, to the needs and special needs that, that we are striving to meet in these days. You can find lots of ways to do that and give an offering on our website by sending a direct deposit with Vanco, even by text or just sending a check in the mail. But please join us in the time of gratitude as we sing the offertory prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at your table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. Lord, use our voices, Lord, use our hands. Lord, use our lives. They are yours. We are an offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you. We give to you. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering, we are an offering. As many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia. As many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The thief comes only to kill and to destroy, but Christ came that we may have life and have it abundantly. As many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia. As many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia.
The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Praise the Lord, rise up rejoicing, worship things, devotion voicing, glory be to God on high, Christ your cross and passion caring, by this Eucharist declaring, yours the final victory. Scattered flock, one shepherd sharing, lost and lonely, one voice hearing, ears attentive to your word. By your blood, new life receiving, in your body firm believing, we are yours and you the Lord. Sins forgiven, wrongs forgiving, we go forth alert and living in your spirit strong and free. Partners in your new creation, seeking peace in every nation, may we faithful followers be. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.